Hey everyone, uh, so this is our start of our unit on systems of equations or systems of functions and we're going to be going over how to solve systems by graphing today. So by the end of this video you'll know how to model or analyze a situation and solve it using a system of equations and how to solve a system of equations by graphing. So I want to give a little intro on where systems come from. So let's take a word problem, okay? So you're supposed to be choosing between two different cell phone plans. The first has a monthly fee of $15 plus 20 cents for each minute you use. The second plan has a monthly fee of $30 but only costs 10 cents for each minute. So which plan is cheaper after 100 minutes? Well, let's figure this out. So um, we can take and say, okay, our first one uh, I'll, I'll do in purple, uh, we used 100 minutes. So we ignore this first sentence. I don't care about that. So the first monthly fee of $15 and cost 20 cents each minute you use. So we would say, okay, 0.20 times 100, right? The minutes you use times that, plus 15, right? Because that's my... Uh, operating cost. So 100 times 0.20 is 20 plus 15, that's $35. Okay, that's pretty simple. Well, let's do the second one. Well, now it's 10 cents per minute. So 0.10 times 100 plus, now it's 30. So now it's $10 plus 30, which is 40. So which one is cheaper? Well, it would actually be the first plan is cheaper. Okay. But what about 200 minutes? Well, we'll, go, we'll repeat the process. Times 200 plus 15. Well, uh, 20 cents or 0.20 times 200 is going to be 40 plus 15. That's $55 for plan one. For plan two, I would multiply by 200 plus 30. I would get 20 plus 30, and that's $50. So plan two is, is cheaper after 200 minutes. So the question comes, which one is cheaper, uh, and where is the break-even point? for both of these functions, and that's a system of equations. So now let's get into what a system of equations is. So in this topic, we're going to be uh, discussing how to graph. So there's going to be a graph here. Okay. So the question is, describe under which circumstances a person should choose the second plan. Well, right now we know that the second plan is cheaper at 200 minutes, but it's not cheaper at 100 minutes. So we're going to use a graph to kind of figure that out. Now, if we go back to our questions here, we can create actually uh, an equation in y equals mx plus b form based on this situation. So the first plan, which I will put in purple, uh, says it's a monthly fee of $15. So that's where I'm starting, or otherwise my b and it's 20 cents for each minute I use. So that is my rate of change, or my slope. And it's the same thing for the second plan, except for my starting point is at 30, and my rate of change is 0.10, okay? So let's go back here. So my first plan would be y equals 0.2x plus 15. Starting point, minutes per uh, minutes used. My second plan is y equals 0.1x plus 30. So now the trick is I have to graph it. Well, how do I graph it? I can plug in my b's, right? So I'll start off with my b, okay? 15, okay, that is down here at 15, the third, each one of these is 5, okay. 
Now how do I go up 0.2 over 1? That's, that's kind of weird, right? So I can't, slope is never given as a, as a decimal usually in these problems. Well, I actually, uh, I have problems graphing that. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use my answers from the previous topic. I know at 100 minutes, it costs $35. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to 100, and I'm going to go up to 35, which is right here. And then I'm going to go to 255. 255. I have those points already done because I've already plugged in those numbers. Now I can draw that straight line right there. Or as straight as Mr. Parsons can get it. And I would repeat the process with my second one. I'm going to start off at 30. Well, at 100 minutes, it was at 40. At 200 minutes, it was at 50. Boom. So now you see that I have two lines graphed. Now, the, where it is says where it's cheaper. So this purple line or this first situation is cheaper until they cross right here and then it gets more expensive. While the second plan is, is cheaper after that crossing point. So how do I answer this question? Well, where is that crossing point? Well, that crossing point is right here, okay? That is at 150 minutes, okay? 150, and at $45. So my point is 150, 45. And if you actually look at our answers, 100 and 200, in the middle of that is 150. Okay, 35, 55, that's at 45. Oh, surprise there. 40 and 50, what's in the middle of 40 and 50? 45. Okay, so how do I, how do I answer this? Okay, the second plan is cheaper. After 150 minutes. Boom. Okay? The first plan is cheaper before 150, and it doesn't matter as long uh, if I just use exactly 150. That is called a solution to a system of equations. I find the intersection point. So you have to remember how to graph. Now, systems of equations can have multiple solutions. Okay? Usually it's where two uh, equations cross each other or what common point they have, okay? There's multiple ways of how to solve them, but what we do is we say, okay, there's one solution if they intersect. There's no solution if they're parallel, and there's infinite solutions if they're right on top of each other, okay? So you'll have to recognize that when they're like the same line, there's infinite solutions, okay? So, this is the graph of this. They will cross. There's exactly one solution. They're the same line. There's infinitely many. Parallel lines, there's no solution because they'll never cross. So we're looking what point they have in common. Let's look at some examples. Well, first off, we always have to get it into y equals mx plus b form. So we need to solve for y. So in this case, for this first equation, I'm going to subtract x on both sides. I'm going to get y equals negative x plus 2. Okay. For the second equation, I'm going to subtract x. I'm going to get negative y equals negative x plus 4. But now, because I remember that negative sign, there's a negative 1 in there. I'm going to divide by negative 1 on to everything. So my second equation is y equals x, or 1x, minus 4. So now, the second process, get in, the first step is get into y equals mx plus b. 
Second step is to graph it. So I'll graph my first equation. I'm going to start at 2. And now I'm going to go down 1 over 1, because there's an invisible negative 1 there. Down 1 to the right 1. Down 1 to the right 1. Down 1 to the right 1. I always find it helpful to draw that line, or uh, continue those points throughout. Okay. The second equation, I go start at negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And now I'm going to go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. You see, if I continue it, I find this intersection point. That intersection point is the solution. So I write my solution as 1, 2, 3, negative 1. 3, negative 1. That is the solution to that system. In our second equation, again, I, I don't have to get this into y equals mx plus b, but I do have to get this one in. So it's 2y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by 2 to everything. I get y equals 2x plus 1. Now, if you notice, y equals 2x plus 1, y equals 2x plus 1. They're the same line. So when I graph it, I would start at 1, and then I go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. I graph that line. I would just repeat the same steps for the second equation. So it doesn't really, where, where do they overlap? Every point. So this is an infinite amount of solutions. So that's how you can tell when you get them into y equals mx plus b, they're the same exact thing. You can say there are infinitely many solutions or an infinite amount of solutions because they're overlapping at every point. And then when I, again, I don't have to put this one in y equals mx plus b, but I am going to subtract 2x on both sides here. 2y equals negative 2x plus 4. I divide by 2 to everything. I'm left with y equals negative x plus 2. So if I graph this first one, I'm going to start at negative 3, go down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. I have this orange line. I'm going to start for the second one at 2. Go down one over one, down one over one, down one over one. You'll notice that they are parallel. You can tell that they're parallel because they have the same slope, that negative one x there. So that means they will never cross, which means there are no solutions. So when you graph them and they cross, there's one solution, and you write it out as a point. If they come out to be the same line, there's infinite many solutions. If they come out to be parallel, there's no solutions. Again, they're only going to be parallel if that number in front of x, the m, the slope, is the same. So if you could try these problems right here, the trick with this for number 1, negative x over 3. This can be rewritten as y equals negative one-third x plus one. So it's written a little differently, but it's still the negative one-third x plus one. The second equation is y equals one-half x minus four. So again, the process, get them into y equals mx plus b form, and graph them on the same graph. If they cross, find out the point where they cross. If they don't cross, then it's no solutions. If they are the same line, then it's infinitely many. Please try these four practice problems and this word problem that follows from my intro, intro video. Come in to class with any questions. Thank you for your attention.